So this rumor or real video was supposed to be about how Sandro Tonali is not joining Newcastle United and how I think that's a highly unlikely move to happen. But just in a matter of a few hours, it's all changed, guys. Sandro Tonali is headed to the Premier League. And let me tell you this, it's not just Tonali. Some reports are claiming that both Atletico Madrid and Manchester United have made an offer for Theo Hernandez. Welcome to the first episode of This Mercato's Rumor or Real, where we evaluate a bunch of transfer reports to see if they're a rumor or if they're real. These are some of the profiles we're gonna be looking at today, but let's kick it off with the main story and that's Sandro Tonali to Newcastle United. Since some Newcastle supporters are gonna be watching this video, let's take it a couple years back. So Sandro Tonali was heavily scouted by all the top teams in Serie A, but he chose to pick a club that he was a boyhood fan of. As a child, Sandro Tonali wrote a letter to Santa to get him a Milan jersey. And when he grew up and it was time for him to pick a big club, he, he rejected Juventus and Inter, and he chose to go with a Milan side that had hadn't made the Champions League in seven seasons. In his second year, he made his loan move permanent, but in order to do that, guys, he took a pay cut. A 23-year-old midfielder, highly recruited by all teams in the league, took a pay cut to stay with his boyhood club. In his first permanent year, he led Milan to win their first Serie A title in 11 years. And this is him just a few days ago, crying, watching a Milan legend retire. That's the player that you're getting. A player that takes a pay cut to play for the team that he wants to. He gives it his all on the field and has a deep love and affection for his teammates. And the sad part is that the kind of loyalty that this player showed to the club, he didn't really want to join Newcastle United initially. It's only when he found out that his boyhood club is willing to sell him to another team is when Tonali decided that, you know what? I might as well go then. And that type of reciprocation is heartbreaking to see. And now to address those Milan fans that are livid about this move, I get it guys, this is an absolute shocker. I did not think there was any chance of this happening. So how it pretty much happened is this. Newcastle tried to go for Nicolo Barella of Inter Milan. They made an offer or they made, made an inquiry around that 50 million mark. They completely rejected that. They wanted closer to 100 million. They then decided to switch gears and come to Milan for Sandro Tonali. They initially made an offer around that 60 million markup. The management went back to Newcastle, said 60 million is not gonna be enough. They want something at least in the range of 80 million. And it looks like the two clubs will find an agreement somewhere around that 75 million mark. And I think it all boils down to this. What does Milan do with the funds? For now, I'm stunned, I'm unhappy, I'm pretty pissed off at the ownership group for this sale, but I'm also going to hold on to my judgment for the next couple months because if this money is spent wisely, I don't know if we can continue to complain about this move in the long term. If the management can use the funds from the sale and sign someone like Sergei Milinkovic Savic or reinvest it back into finding a high quality right winger, then the sale might actually over time be worth it. And let me predict this for the future. Unless Milan drastically increases their revenue every single season, I think every summer mercato at least we are going to see a high level player getting sold to be able to fund the rest of the market. This is sad to see. This is not the direction we were hoping the Jedi Cardinal would take the club. And quite honestly, it's also very confusing because it goes against everything that the management has claimed they want to do. They want to build around youth. Sandro Tonali is 23. So the only sense that I can get from this is that maybe the management has picked out a player that they want to purchase. They want to generate new revenue through a sale of a player and then invest it back into the Mercato. But again, we'll have to see. But here's the one thing that this completely confirms for me. Guys, the European Super League is now a necessity. Most leagues cannot compete with what's happening in the world of football. You either have to have the European Super League or you have to have a Europe-wide salary cap. Otherwise, the entire quality of European football will just get pushed towards the Premier League. And look at the ridiculous salary some other countries are offering, 100 million to Angolo Kante from Saudi Arabia. There's no doubt in my mind, no matter what Jedi Cardinal is doing, the 100 million salary to players, that is what is ruining the future of football. And now let's get back to the rest of the players see which of these profiles are rumors and which ones are possibly gonna happen. Which brings us to the striker's role at Milan. The profile that we've been linked with is Marcus Thuram. The reality is this, guys. Last season, Olivier Giroud played 47 games. The guy still ended up scoring 18 goals, but at the age of 36, how long can you expect him to do that for? So there's no question in our minds, departure of Ibrahimovic, 
pretty much the departure of Rival Corrigi. Milan needs a striker. The player that we've been linked with is Marcus Thurm. So there's no doubt about the fact that there's potential of this really happening because the player is also a free agent. Last season, he scored a boatload of goals for Borussia Mönchengladbach and he apparently has been offered a salary of 5 million per season by Milan. But the issue is the competition Milan has for the French player is with PSG. Obviously, there's no competing on salaries for Milan with PSG. The only thing that they can rely on is the fact that they can give him more guaranteed playing time with the Rossoneri. So on the rumor of real meter, I think this report is real. The potential of him moving to Milan is real, but at this point in time, the club are more in a wait and watch scenario with him. So Charles de Kedlar's agent, Tom Dumont, came out and said that he's still part of Milan's plans and he's not going to be leaving the club this Mercato. He also revealed something that we might have almost known all along, talked about how Maldini still believed in CDK and also that Jeffrey Moncada was actually instrumental in bringing him to the club. And since Moncada is still here, there's still trust in CDK's abilities. And fairly, he mentioned he's not the first player to struggle in his first season. Leao wasn't this player. Sandro Tonali wasn't this player. On the rumor of Real Meter, the fact that CDK leaves Milan, I think at this point in time, guys, I'm gonna call it unlikely. I think he still stays, especially after losing Brian Diaz. I think Milan might hold on to CDK for another season. However, if they do get an offer between 25 to 30 million, I think the club will strongly assess that. My only thought is, I don't think they're gonna get one. It looks like at this point in time, one of Messias or Alexis Alamagras is gonna be leaving. The media reports say it's gonna be Messias. I think it's probably going to be Alexis because Milan is likely to get a little bit more money for Alexis and seeing how much Pioli likes to play Messias, I think he might stick with him because he finds him a little bit more reliable. Now, the player that Milan has been linked with is Villarreal's Nigerian right winger, Samuel Chukweze. Last season, this guy had a combined total of 24 goals and assists. And the reality is, I don't think over the past two two seasons, Messias and Alexis Salamakers have combined for that much. So there's no doubt that Milan needs an upgrade in that department. They are desperate for it. Now, the reality is that Villarreal, just like a lot of other football clubs in today's world, are in financial distress. So they need to generate revenue by selling some players. Chukwese has one year left on his profile. The price tag being attached to him is 25 million. Guys, if I look at the rumor real meter for this player, do you think Milan is willing to pay 25 million for a player? I think the only time that that actually happens happens is if we actually sell Sandro Tonali and generate some funds. There are, however, a ton of reports connecting him to Milan. I don't think this is a rumor, but I absolutely think this is unlikely to happen. Now, I know a lot of you guys want him to join Milan, so let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Do you think this move can actually happen? Do you think Milan will pay 25 million for this player? Now, after the departure of Brian Diaz, it's obvious we need to replace him. We need a central attacking midfielder. A profile that we've been linked to is Arda Guler of Fenerbahce. Apparently, Guler at 18 years of age, Age, has no agent, his dad negotiates his deals, and apparently they're trying to up his release clause. Right now, he has a release clause with Fenerbahce for 17 and a half million. They're trying to up that significantly. Would Milan pay 17 and a half million for an 18 year old anyways? I'm not quite sure. And the reality is this, I saw this guy play. He's obviously a good player, but we have some similar issues that we have with Brahim Diaz with Arda Guler. A lot of fans used to complain about the fact that because Brahim Diaz is smaller, he gets pushed around too easily by defenders. Guler is not much taller, guys. And although he can clear clearly pass the ball and score some beautiful goals like the one he scored against Wales. The reality is that a higher release clause, more than 17 and a half million, will probably put this in the range close to about 30 million. I just don't see Milan spending that money. I don't think the reports are very reliable. For now, I'm gonna call this just a rumor. Openda to Milan, deal done, confirmed and sealed. These are the reports we're hearing in the middle of the season. This is exactly why I came up with this series, rumor or real, because a lot of these reports, guys, are absolute nonsense. And now we're getting more information about Openda. So it looks like Lance have set a price tag of 50 million for the striker. The reality is I'll be stunned to see if we spend 15 million on a player in this Mercato if we don't sell a player. Yes, the player helped Lance make it second place, get back into the Champions League, but apparently they've also received an offer from Leipzig in the amount of around that 30 million mark. And seeing the purchasing power of the German club, I think this deal absolutely is a rumor for Milan. I cannot see this happening, no way. Now there have been those reports about Theo Hernandez moving to Manchester United. So Manchester United situation is this. They have Luke Shaw and I think Tyrell Malassia who plays as a left back there. Luke Shaw has been pretty decent the past season, but he's not a player for the future. Manchester United needs a high quality left back for the future. Teo Hernandez is definitely one of the top three left backs in the world, but he also has a contract with Milan until 2026. He's a player who absolutely loves the club, is considered the leader, is considered the quiet captain of this team. Apparently the reported offer was around 50 million. I think first of all, that is a flat out rumor. I don't think there was any 
offer made, but I can promise you this Manchester United and Manchester United fans, there's no chance that Milan comes to the table if it is anything less than 80 to 90 million. But at this point in time, this report purely false, just a rumor. Which brings us to the final profile we're gonna be looking at today, and that is Daichi Kamara, the player that was being linked with Milan alongside Openda. This might be the final parting gift sad to say this, might be the final parting gift from Paolo Maldini to this team. Now there's obviously some frustration amongst Milan fans that this deal's still not done. The reality is this guys, he's still technically under contract till the end of June. So at the end of June, beginning of July, I think this player is expected to come to Milan. I think this deal is very much real. There was some reports suggesting that his agents are apparently not technically registered in Italy. And that will happen sometime around 28th of June and 1st of July. I think he's received offers from other clubs as well. He's rejected them. He wants to come to Milan. So this to me is certainly happening still Daichi Kamara to Milan I think it's just a matter of time well there you have it guys those are the profiles we wanted to check out today welcome back to rumor or real I know you guys have been asking for this episode for a while I just wanted to see if something concrete in the Mercato was happening the Mercato for me has officially kicked off and if you're not part of the channel if you're not part of the community obviously hit the subscribe button hit the like button and if you want to become a member get some priority access to information before these episodes are released make sure to hit the join button down below let me know in the comment section which profiles you agree with which players you want me to talk about name the player in the comments and we'll see in the next video if that's a rumor or if it's real and as always forza milan grazie mille e ciao tutti